I do appreciate it. So uh, following on with Subi, we're going to talk about the phones, but within the context of your dealership culture, uh, let's keep all those great things we just heard Subi talk about and, and bring them through. I'm looking for the magic button here. I found it. All right, so I have more automotive experience with uh, listening to phone calls than I care to admit. Uh, currently, we listen to 100 million phone calls into and out of car dealerships a, a year. 100 million, a ton of calls. So bottom line is we've heard everything. And it's not always pretty. Sometimes it's entertaining. And it all starts with the receptionist. And the big question I have for you is, who do you have on your phones? Phone leads outnumber walk-ins and web leads combined today in 2018. And I'm asking everyone to stop making the phone an afterthought to hiring and running your dealerships. The phone is so important, and by 2020, it's going to become critical. The more time we spend with bots, the more important that human interaction becomes. And so we look at our receptionist who's answering the phone, and the first question I ask, and again, following on with what Subi talked about, is, is that what they want to do? Do they prefer that job? Do you disc profile? Do you actually work and understand who you're hiring and make sure that, yeah, they actually want to be that first impression for your customers? That's what they like to do. We all smile, but at the end of it, are we saying, I don't really care? And how does your phone interview process go, or your interview process go with those that you hire to handle the phone? I'll tell you what, the first interview for a BDC rep or a receptionist should be over the phone. Because if they don't wow you over the phone, there's really no sense coming down for a face-to-face -face interview. So focus on the right people in the right jobs. Let's take a look at uh, a relationship and how much the receptionist impacts you. Because we, most dealerships have a answer and transfer process. And there's two ways you can transfer that phone call. You can just simply speed it away and transfer it. And that's where you see that third box that says voicemail or no agents available. You see a lot of calls going into voicemail when you answer and transfer. The other process we have is, no, we don't do that, Mike. We don't just transfer them. We keep them on hold, and we try to find the right person to help them. In which case, that second box with the 21, those are your on hold hangups. And so you have that relationship. You almost have to choose one or the other. I can have a lot of on hold hangups, or I can have a lot of voicemails but I can't eliminate both. And so we really encourage you to listen to how your customers are asking. Build a little compromise between those two, a hybrid solution. So when your callers call up and they say, hey, is Dan available? And Dan's one of your salespeople, okay? That's for sales. Or they say, hey, uh, sales department, please, or used sales. Okay, they're asking for a used department, I can transfer them there. Well, the people that ask for Dan, clearly they know Dan. They clearly have a relationship with your store. The ones that ask for sales, it's questionable. A lot of them just know that's how you do it when you call your store. You ask for sales and then you ask for Dan. But you have a small percentage of customers that call up and they say, yeah, I'm calling about this 2015 Civic I see on your website, stock number 123. They're asking about a specific product. They do the same thing in service too, about repair orders. That's a clue to your receptionist that you have no relationship with this customer. They're truly, truly new. So out of the 205 people that called this store in the top left corner and asked for sales in one way or the other, seven of them we identified as truly new customers. They asked for product. They had never called the store before. We scoured DMS, we scoured CRM. They're not in there. They're a new customer. And look, three were lost on hold, two went to voicemail and hung up and didn't call back, and two of them actually spoke with the sales agent. So those are five opportunities, and you know with those five, there's more in the 21 and the 33, and you know that a percentage of those would set an appointment, show, and buy. So log your calls. Make sure that your receptionist is listening for how they're asking, log it, and make sure that your sales manager knows about these seven, because you can re-engage these even if you drop the ball. Uh, and uh, Subi also talked about the, uh, the why buy, right, the dealer benefit statement. Here's what we hear on the phone call. Very important also. It's great to have the why buy statements. So here's a caller calling up about a 2018 Accord. And he's currently driving a 15 Accord. All right, same brand, loyal customer, great. 
we need to go with our dealer benefit statement. This is why you need to buy from us. You have a lot of choices of Honda dealers in the area. This is why you need to choose our store. However, we hear with, when they're calling up and they're currently driving, say, a Camry, then you really need to lead with the brand's benefit statement. I'm so far from buying from your store or any other Honda store. I, I want to know why Honda in the first place, because I've been a loyal Toyota driver for years now. So why buy is important, but when we listen to those appointments set, we hear people, the more successful appointment setting, lead with the benefit statement based on what they're driving and what they're calling for. Why are handling phone calls so hard? Why have we been talking about this for decades? Because there's a lot of moving parts. These are just a couple things that you can really hone and train your receptionist on that will make the difference for you. So did you know, on calls where the appointment is set, they talk to a salesperson virtually every time, and they're on hold for, 87% of them are on hold for less than 30 seconds. Whereas if you look at those that hold for longer than 30 seconds, they only speak to a representative about half the time. They give up, they hang up, or they're told no one's available and their appointment set rate drops to 66%. So it's pretty critical that when someone calls for sales that they actually talk to sales. Think about your own habits today when you're on your phones. Why do you call any comp company in the first place? I mean, you can do everything on your phone. I can research cars, I can look for service, I can watch videos, I can read reviews. Your customers are calling your store because they can't find the information online. And waiting 30 seconds is an eternity in today's day and age. Uh, Grant, I may have the patience of a gnat to begin with, but I can't wait 30 seconds, can you? So 30 seconds is that golden mark to measure uh, your store by. You have to check in within 30 seconds. It's this important, right? If you want, if you want to present, prevent it, right, 75% of your hangups will be prevented if you keep it to less than 30 seconds. All right, so how about the battle between the phone tree and the live answer and transfer? This is a big question, because I let off talking about answer and transfer, answer and hold, and the reality is, is that when you have an answer and transfer process, it's no better or worse than a phone tree, even though we hate the idea of phone trees. We're gonna love them, by the way, as soon as Alexa and Siri come in and start helping us with those, and those are coming in, in just a year or two down the road, I believe, for dealerships. But in the meantime, look at your effectiveness rate and you might want to go with a phone tree. If you have one now, it's real simple. Keep it to four choices or less. You can't remember more than four choices, and that fourth really should be a catch-all. And lead with the most popular choices, which is service. Press one for service, press two for sales. We always like to put sales first. We put it in the top left corner of our website, so it's number one when you dial. And guess what? When you look at the analytics of it, 50% of the calls to your sales department when it's number one aren't for sales. So if you're using it for metrics, it's a fallacy. So do what Call Review always recommends, which is ask yourself one question when designing any process. What makes for the best caller experience? Well, 70% of my callers are calling for service. Let's make that number one. Let's take care of them right away. And then all those that want sales and press two, they're truly going to be sales opportunities. And it's another way for you in the store to log your calls and understand who's calling for sales. We have uh, uh, some more data I'm gonna share with you, the data I've already shared. It comes from Fix the Phones. It's generic Fix the Phones, our gift to the industry. You can actually go there and download training, no email. It's not a sales mechanism. It truly is us giving training to the industry. So everything we do in Fix the Phones is where the data's coming from. It's not my opinion up here. I'm not smart enough to have an opinion. I do read data and I report back on that data to you. One other important note about our Fix the Phones and where we really got all this data is we didn't just go to high performers and say, we're going to learn from these high performers. We made sure that every high performer that we profiled and studied also demonstrated not just the highest competence, but also the highest character. They did it right. They really care for their customers. So let's see a few more things that we learned from this and talk about how you might want to re-engineer your processes. Well, to do it, uh, as Steve Jobs always said, start backwards, right? Go with the experience that you want. Call your stores on your way home today. Call your stores, experience the process, and think immediately, this is what I want. You know, and, and go big with what you want. Again, following on with Subi's conversation, dream big about the process you want. 
When you go into your stores, you'll probably see uh, something like this in the BDC and the sales office, right? How many, how many calls do we have? How many outbounds did you make? How many appointments were set, right? I wanna, I wanna play one call, it's about two minutes long, uh, and, and let's, let's talk about this call. Hey, Dave, no motors, I'm Dave Subaru, how may I help you? Hi there, um, I'm looking at the Subaru Impreza, and I'm looking at your old website right now. It's a new and customer. And I wanted to know in the inventory section, um, if that was kind of 100% um, representative of Just ask the, the receptionist questions. That you all have Doesn't know lot. the process of okay, this store, on, never called before. Okay, hold on, I'll get somebody for you, hang on. Sure, hold on. Thank you, Subaru, Hi, um, I am looking at your old website, and I'm looking at the Subaru Impreza, and wondering if um, everything on the website is basically what you all have on the lot um, at the moment. Okay, uh, what kind of Subaru uh, Impreza are you looking for? Um, probably just to lease the 2017, pretty much the most basic model. Okay. Tax that. Guys, uh, so when would be a good time for you to come in, you think? Well, that's what I'm in, I don't know yet, because I'm still, I'm about an hour and 15 minutes so, away. So, ask for the appointment, to call right out of the gate. See, again, if, Where if did your you learn website to was representative of what you all have on the lot. We do have a base model, uh, a package one and Prezo hatchback. We just got it. So. Okay. Maybe it's not on our website, but we still we do have still that, have that one. Who am I speaking with? Okay. Diana? Who am I speaking um, with? What, Gotta what get that contact that, information, brother. Get that Black. contact Black? information. Okay. Just find that one, possibly. Um, what? Is it Kristen? Yeah. Right. So yeah, your old website shows that there are. Um, it says matching six impresas. Is that is that about right? Yeah. Great. Okay. Okay, great. Well, um, yeah, if we decide to come on by, then um, we will talk more in person about it. Let me I'll give you some information. Do you have She's bailing, right? Yeah. She's like, I'm out of this uh, call. No, I don't. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> is this your cell number? Yeah. Five, three, zero. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. going to send you some, uh, text you some information. And sure. Do you have an email address, Kristen, that I could send Get you? Get that email. email and information nice. about that vehicle as well. Um, no, that's okay. If I, if I need more information, I'll go ahead and call you guys back. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to send you, send you a text here, some information that will be uh, useful to you. I uh, send you a uh, text. Brother, the last uh, thing in the world she wants is to give you her cell phone so you can text okay. my name with it. And uh, okay. you, if you have any questions. Uh, so when would be a good day or time for you all to come in, in case if you would like to come in? Um, if it was going to be any time, it would be sometime today, like this afternoon. Well, but I'm going to have to. Uh, you know what? That's technically a soft day. appointment yeah. he just got. Uh, How you feel? She might come by this afternoon. Uh, this guy so, is on uh, fire. This afternoon, uh, what's a good time you think would be? I'm not sure if we will be. All in right. Today. That's what we, I'm we can kill you. it. It's oh, ending okay. in 10 seconds okay. anyway. So the point of that conversation, first of all, yes, those happen in your store too, believe it or not. It was a painful call, right? Uh, but when you think about the flow that he went through, in many ways, he's just working that phone call with everything that's on the wall. You gotta get contact information, get that email address, ask for the appointment, ask a couple times. He set a soft appointment. On paper, he actually did things well. If all you're looking at are data points, hey, you asked for the appointment twice, you got a soft appointment, you got contacted, dude, you're really good. When you actually listen to the phone call, it tells a very different story. So when you call your store and you understand the experience that you want, and now it's time to actually create it, this is what I mean by work backwards. Because customers don't care anything about how many times you ask for the appointment or how many shows you have or how many buys you have, right? What customers want are things like integrity, they want transparency, they want you to be engaging, responsive, they want honesty, right? We're talking about these high performing pro people that perform both with high competence, but also with very high character. That's what earns trust, and that's what sets appointments. Does it really work? Take a look at this. 151 people that actually spoke to the sales department, 72% were offline. That means that they didn't get their questions answered. That means a salesperson couldn't or wouldn't answer the question. I won't answer, but give me your name and number, and I'll pretend to go find out. I already know the answer, and then I'll call you back and tell you the answer, and now I have your contact information. And then 19 had no next step. These are the ones that, these are the ones that give you the aja. These are the ones where like, they go through, yeah, it's, we have that in stock. Yeah, it's low mileage, driven by a grandmother. It's in perfect shape. It's a great buy. Great, thank you, thank you, goodbye, goodbye and there's no next step at all in those calls. Right? Those happen, but when you look at 60 appointments set out of 151, that's less than 
Listen, 70% of your people are calling your stores just to see if the car's there. It is, it's just availability calls. If you say yes, you should be setting at least 60% appointments, but we're not. We're under 50%, we're under closer to 40%, but if you factor out the 72% that you didn't answer their questions, well then it's 60 out of 80. That's where it should be. That is where it should be. So you've got to answer those questions. There's a best practice from this uh, a Honda dealer up in the Seattle area. I'm not saying I recommend this for everybody, but they made a decision to dedicate to the phone. They took an old Blackberry and they tethered it to a hospital ID pole. And they assigned somebody to answer those inbound calls. And they'd answer the call and be like, uh, yeah, that's a great question about the warranty. Um, let me look it up. And they take their ID pole and they're walking across the showroom floor, right? And they sit down and they find the information and answer it there. They're not ever going to tell the customer, I have to call you back. So they made a portable solution so that the management team can always see who's on the phone and then given the mobility to get around to answer the questions, including going out on the lot to answer the caller's questions. Now, I'd encourage you to do that. You kill offline, it'll go up. The average appointment set rate is 36% on every call to US car dealers. If you have to call them back, it drops to 21. Keep them on the phone. But listen, we're human, we're not perfect, we're gonna fail. So just call them back, right? Those 72, make sure you have a way to re-engage those. Those 19, TO those to a manager or another salesperson. People that hang up the phone, these 19 people with no next step, the biggest reason why customers say thank you, goodbye, you've been very helpful, goodbye, is because they're not ready to set an appointment and they don't know the next question to ask. And so they have two choices, to say goodbye or sit there in awkward silence while they think. And that's too uncomfortable for any of us to bear. On a phone call like that, two seconds is a long time. So you TO those, you call them back 30 minutes later, that's the sweet spot. At that point, the game has slowed down for them and one in four will set an appointment. You don't even have to have a creative reason. You can say, hey, it's Mike, I'm calling you back. I understand you talked to Joe about 30 minutes ago. I want to know if you reconsidered uh, coming in for that car. Actually, yes, I would like to. One in four will say that. So going back to what customers want, they want that honesty, the transparency, they want you to use great technology, they want you to answer their questions. So after listening to all of our calls and our fix the phone study, when you answer all the caller's questions in a positive and upbeat manner, 57% of the time, the caller asks for the appointment. That sounds great, I'd like to come in. So it's, it's this transition to really Putting everything in the caller's experience first can be a difficult one, but it's well worth the investment. And it's well worth you know, moving your dealership's culture in this direction. So 82% uh, of customers say that the number one factor that leads to a great customer experience is having all their questions and, and issues addressed right there on the first phone call, right? They I can actually fall in love with your dealership based on one great opening phone call. A uh, little bit on phone skills, I'm not gonna go too deep in here, and I know this is hard to read, but the top line is customer uh, contact information obtained, did you get full name, alter the phone, email, and the bottom one is did you obtain current vehicle? And if you want some more insight into your reps and how well they're performing, how much they're putting the caller's experience first, look at that bottom one, are they obtaining the current vehicle. We know that when the current vehicle obtained is north of 50%, the appointment set rate is north of 60%. It's a causal relationship, right? We're talking to them, we're answering their questions, we're getting into dialogue. And part of that dialogue is, oh, why are you moving from the Camry to the Accord? Well, I read this or I heard that. And, and then next thing you know, the trust is there. And next thing you know, the caller says, I'd like to come in and drive that. So you want to just appear one layer deep, focus on uh, current vehicle obtained. A little bit about appointments, which is really to say we didn't learn too much about it. So going across left to right, we have the same day firm appointment. I'll be in later today at 5.15. Same day soft, I'll come in after work. Uh, future day firm, Saturday at one o'clock. And future day soft, I'll come in over the weekend. And you can see actual numbers for this dealer, and this is really representative of most dealers, they're really spread out. 
Um, we think it is good to focus on a firm appointment. It resonates more. But if they offer a soft appointment, take it. Uh, I, I share my story. I actually live in uh, San Juan, Puerto Rico. I actually bought a little Honda HRV because the streets down there are the size of bike lanes. And I called a little over a year ago, saying, hey, yeah, I want to come down and get this HRV. He's like, great, one, 115 or 245 better for you. I said, I tell you this, the deal. My wife's going to take a nap. I'm laying the baby down for a nap. So if she goes to sleep by 115, I'll definitely be in there. If you can get her to sleep sooner, I'll come in sooner. But the bottom line is when she lays down for a nap, I'm coming in. Soft appointment. Couldn't have been a better soft appointment. I came in and, and wrote the check and bought the car. So work with your customers and their preferences. A uh, couple of best practices here. Uh, you know, dedicate yourself to the phone, right? A memorable experience begins with hiring the right people for the job. Right? Don't just ship people in on the phone. Don't make it an afterthought. Actually test. Again, DISC is one. There's a lot of profile tests out there. That is just one aid, one help to help you make a hiring decision of who will excel on the phone versus who will just answer the phone. And demonstrate the expertise. That's why they're calling. Again, Bing says that by 2020, 85% of customer interaction will be with non-humans. And think about your own experiences. You're calling an airline or something else and you pick up the phone and you talk to a human, you kind of want them to know why you're calling. You, you want them to help you on that very first call. So demonstrate that expertise. Always using positive language. Subtle difference, and this is deep to train, deeper to training to. But here's a negative example. I can't get that part till next week. It's back ordered. It's, it's not available right now. Versus the same message, a little bit more positive. That'll be available next week. I could place the order for you right now, and I'll call you prior to coming and picking it up. Make connections. A memorable experience begins with a relationship. Again, the appointment will be set as soon as trust is established on the phone. And trust is established where character meets competence. And be human, most of all, right? Um, you can get contact information. This guy on the example phone, he asked for it. He didn't earn it. It's so easy to get contact information when you're human. Customers actually want to give you their phone. And you know, going a step further and for another conversation is they want to go mobile to mobile. They want to build that connection with your team and they want to text them and they want to call them throughout the sales and service process. So again, I invite you to go to fixthephones.com. Again, it's, it's completely generic and you can get free training downloads. This session can be downloaded there. You can download the Fix the Phones program. All the best practices you need to improve uh, your phone experience in your store. So thank you very much. Okay, Michael. So phones. Uh, just a couple quick questions. Yeah. Thank you very much, first of all. Pleasure. Um, I thought about that uh, going around with the uh, IV, the Blackberry. Yes. So like just having a princess phone on an extended uh, cord could work too. It's, yeah, don't go it's there. more about the interaction yeah. than it is the device. So, so I'm listening to that conversation, and I know that there are certain things that are trying to be accomplished. If we can de deconstruct that since we have just a couple more minutes. Um, she was getting, uh, I don't know, perceived agitated, like, you know, kind of came in with a quick question. And then, so how do you keep her, you know, cheerful? She wanted to see inventory, keep her engaged. I mean, mm -hmm. and then but get out of the way almost rather than keep trying to, to grab, grab, grab. So does that make sense? It, it does make sense. And, you know, we, had, in this, that example specifically, um, we would actually counsel our client to take that person off the phone completely until such time that they can be close with the skill set necessary. Right? There are top performers that do great. There are those that need training in certain areas. And again, there are those that just shouldn't be on the phone. And oftentimes, more often than not, some of your top salespeople are not good on the phone. And that goes about you know, understanding what your skill sets are and preferences are and making sure you match it. Uh, I think anybody else who had that phone call that was a, a, a decent performer, she would have agreed to come by. And then also, I, I, again, just deconstructing that call, I'm hearing a, 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 a English as a second language accent, for, to, what, you know, to put it, which I guess could be a plus or minus depending on uh, who's on the other end. So how do you Correct. Yeah, uh, uh, handle that in terms of, again, you know, uh, relationships are established differently vocally than they mm -hmm. are in person. So. Yeah, no question. Um, sensitive subject as well. But we hear with, I mean, there, there are some times where accents are 
uh, thick, and you literally hear the customer saying, I don't understand. Say that again, please. And so that's a valid uh, situation that, that you can talk about. An accident by itself, though, has no impact on appointment setting, customer service at all. So in, in this case, it's really more about listen to the customer and answer her questions rather than keep trying to go, oh, you want to set an appointment? Oh, I'm sure we have it. Come on in. Yeah. Well, and, and that said, and I know, uh, I think Richard's still here from uh, White Bear. Uh, that was, to me, part of the attraction or, or uh, the delight in that whole presentation. Uh, Richard was obviously from the area, from the north, and, and had a good uh, localized uh, dialect, uh, for lack of a mm -hmm. better word, that, that kind of fit in better with the whole presentation. I don't know how important that is to think through when you're talking about just the vocal, vocalization on the phone, that the, the voices represent the, uh, the local area. So, I don't know. We, we 100 million calls. Uh, yeah, okay. yeah. Now, all we do is listen to phone calls and, yeah. and go with the data. This, yeah. this, is, this isn't our opinion. Yeah. So well, really maybe that'll, that'll be in our next study. Okay. Well, thank you very thank much. Thank you very Michael. much. Thank Good you. Good to see you. Thank you. All right.